I'm Eric Denker, the senior lecturer at the National Gallery of Art and the curator for this exhibition, Reflections and Undercurrents, Ernest Roth and Printmaking in Venice from 1900 to 1940. Ernest Roth first came to Italy ostensibly on his way to Paris in 1905, but he never got to Paris on this trip. Instead, he fell in love with Italy and the Italians, with Florence and with Venice, and he stayed for three years evolving as an etcher, studying the work of others, including Edward Millington Singe, and noticing the work of Whistler, the pioneering work where Whistler had captured a Venice of the Venetians. The kind of back alleys, small squares, deserted canals that nobody had focused on prior to the 1880s. Whistler was working against the tradition of Canaletto and Guardi, who had done monumental views of Venice, and Turner had as well. Whistler wanted to do something unique, something very contemporary, and so everyday Venice was important to him. Roth noticed this, among other aspects of Whistler's aesthetics, and decided to pursue sketching on the copper plate, give an informal quality to his etchings of Venice. We know that he stayed for three years, and during that three-year period, he showed at the Venice Biennial in 1907. Queen Margarita of Savoy bought one of his prints and his career took off. 1908, he went back to the United States. He returned for a second visit between 1912 and 1914 with his good friend Jules Andre Smith. Smith, a little bit younger, had gotten an architecture degree from Cornell University and the two of them traveled together mostly through Italy but through Germany and France as well, collecting drawings they would turn into etchings when they returned to the United States. Their work reflects the contemporary changes in Venice, but again, depicts everyday life, portrays the kinds of scenes that would have been seen by the typical Venetian, not simply the tourists there to see the Grand Canal, the Rialto Bridge, the Basilica of San Marco, or Piazza San Marco. In this, they were very much in the same texture tenor of Whistler. Well, a decade later, Roth would return again, and this time as a more accomplished etcher. He was mature, he won awards, he developed his own work, and now leaving behind some of the preciousness of some of the youthful work, some of the heavy line work and deep shadows, his Venice is infused with light, given a whole new quality in terms of the immediacy of being on the spot. We can see that in two prints that I'm standing next to. They are images of poorer sections of Venice. The housing, not far behind the Church of the Frari, as an example. And here we see the stones, the light crossing the facades, the tower of the Church of the Frari. Now, one aspect of Roth's work that very much relied on Whistler's model was to work on the spot directly onto the plate. Working on the plate, he got a very nice sense of the actual site. But when it went to the printing process, it reversed the image. And both of these are in reverse of the actual sites. Whistler would have said this was so that people admired them for the quality of the artistry and not simply as postcards. Roth would have been very much of the same mind, that these are beautiful images of the lives of Venetians, the kinds of visual scenery that they saw so often, and that they capture the artistry of the art of etching and the technique of printmaking itself.